but yeah look so that's all my oh you do have a lot of questions so this is how i would normally do it i've done all of my previous stuff in person and all in different locations so this is the first time that i'm doing what i normally do this way <laughs> so um it's a little it's nice to be more relaxed and not have to do it you know in a normal interview style so i don't have to do you know on show all the time but um yeah we can just we can just jam out and we can just talk about you know untapped and uh you know you and uh for the people that watch it for the for my audience i thought it would be good for the you know the young women audience the the one person out there that might think oh i'm really motivated i'm really inspired but i don't know how to do it yet i haven't had that edge that tipping point and then the one person that might watch it and then think hear a story of yours or an insight or a piece of advice and then go right i'm gonna go and do it yeah that'd be the goal that's the dream so that's always my kind of thought process behind any kind of content that i produce no. so um yeah tell me about tell me about untapped so we are a social media agency based in london but we work with clients around the world and we help ambitious brands with their social media content their advertising and their strategy so basically what that looks like is businesses come to us when they don't know how to use social media properly they don't know how to run ads but they know that they want to reach more people or generate more revenue or connect with their audience or whatever the goal is and we bridge that gap between what they need to do and where they are currently it's interesting you say that <laughs> because everyone wants to reach more people in today's mm. world right that's 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 the that's the goal but they don't know how or why so they've never stopped to ask why am i reaching more people which should be the first question is do you get tired of asking that do you get tired of hearing that or or do you just kind of Uh, well, I think it's, you know, a business aim of, oh yeah, you know, we want to reach more people or we want more followers or we want more likes. It always just stings to me a little bit of perhaps not a, a solid enough business strategy that yeah, they're, they're defaulting to, well, we need to reach more people. We need to be in front of more people when mm. actually, you know, it's, it's like Seth Godin talks about the minimum viable audience that you can have. You know, you don't need millions and millions of people to know about you, but you need to figure out how many people, and that could be a couple of thousand, maybe a couple of hundred, if you've got a really high ticket price item, you know, you don't need that many people to buy necessarily, it depends on what your revenue goals are. But yeah, absolutely. It's a bit of a default answer. You know, we want to reach more people. We want to be in front of more people. And the, there's a lot more that you can do with social media than just get Massively. Like, and I think, you know, with content being so subjective nowadays, you know, the, the following and the audiences, uh, I don't focus so much on that because content is subjective Um, and then what comes as a result of that is also subjective. I mean, for Christ's sake, when Jennifer Aniston hopped on Twitter uh, or on Instagram, sorry, she did one post and now she has like 15 million followers. Yeah. So that kind of proves the point that you don't really need to do much in this day and age to actually get, you know, the following the likes of subscribers but if you actually really want to make a difference and if you actually really want to do something then you need to kind of practice your craft and learn fail learn you need to practice yeah. it you can't just you can it be the, the celebrity <laughs> yeah right <laughs> that's what i was just going to say it helps being jennifer aniston or will smith or harry and megan or any of the other yeah. celebrities joined instagram and set records with how quickly they've grown their following but you know that's also a lesson to businesses and brands and you know whether that's a personal brand or an entrepreneur who want to build their following up is it's not just about the following that you have on instagram mm. it's about what else you're doing in life and you know how big your business is or the projects you've worked on or the causes you support the people that know you outside of social media that 
the way to grow on social media it's not just that you need to you know post helpful content you can also just be like a really cool person outside of social media and you bring that following from yep. other things onto your instagram page which is what you know will smith when he launched youtube his content is amazing obviously and you know the editing is brilliant and he's got really really talented people working in his team but was he not will smith and he started he's just a cool guy like, <laughs> yeah like but he, he wouldn't be at millions and millions of followers like he is now but he came onto that platform yeah as will smith with you know 40 years or 30 years i don't want to age him beyond, beyond his years but however many years since fresh prince where he's been you know producing all this amazing stuff so. I, I think the problem is and I, i've got it written down here actually i think there's it's almost a question, but I'm not sure what it is, whether there's an arrogance between the, you know, the freelancers, the creators, the people who are, you know, have been, I've been doing it since I was 17. You know, I didn't go to uni. I did the normal route and then had to work up there. And then the people who are well-known have it mm-hmm. since then and then go, oh, I might do an Instagram. Oh, I might do a YouTube. Because they already have it. They already got what they want. But then they think, Oh, it's an extra option. You know, it's an extra thing that I can do. I don't know. T- I, I've seen videos with uh, rappers, musicians, artists, whatever. And then when they get asked, what's TikTok? They go, I don't know. <laughs> because, yeah. you know, that for me, I'm always trying to find every new thing because your every day's, you know, a battle. Uh, every day's, uh, you know, it's not, shouldn't be. <laughs> but every day is trying to find something new. Um, and there, there can be a little bit of an arrogance between, you know, when the internet, internet first came on scene, it was like this Nirvana phase. It was like awesome. It was amazing. You know, I still remember Bebo. Oh, Bebo. I know, that's how, nice. old, that's how old I am. <laughs> and I still remember that and I still remember that kind of era where everything was like, wow, this is amazing. I, I think that there is just a big difference between people whose job is content creation and people whose job is something else, but they're creating content around that. There's definitely differences in, in how the two operate and use the platform. And on that note, do you think COVID has impacted entrepreneurs in a good way or a bad way? I think overall in a good way. I'm, okay. I'm an optimist. I'd like to say overall in a good way. I think it's probably built up a lot of people's resilience. Yeah. Um, with, with a good skill to have learned. I feel like years down the line, the entrepreneurs that have a really good mindset about difficulties and overcoming challenges and, you know, even failure, meaning that you've learned, etc., will look back and think it's been a good thing. But I'm sure there's a lot of people right now who are feeling like it's been a, a bad year. But, um, you know, if, if you can build a business or grow a business or even just survive your business through COVID and 2020, then what can't you survive? You know, is the viewpoint I take on it that we can, can learn good things from it and be more resilient moving forward. Is that something you've had to learn yourself? how to accept failure how to how to deal with that oh yeah massively i i used to think of myself as a huge perfectionist and i really hated to fail and you know all these different things that we tell ourselves and all it really means is that you don't end up putting yourself out there or doing the things that you're meant to do because yeah you know failure is really the only thing that's guaranteed like when someone starts a business I can really tell you you know how much money the business is going to make how many staff they'll employ how many years they'll run for I can probably tell you that they will fail at one or more like there's no way you won't you know success isn't guaranteed but failure is and um it was a a talk I watched a few weeks ago with um Louis Davies who's an entrepreneur and he said that entrepreneurship is literally just going between failure to failure to failure (laughs) but still still feeling like you want to do the next failure and I was like yeah that's so true and it's something I didn't get at the start I thought everything had to be brilliant all the time and you know yeah (laughs) no this is literally just walking from mistake to mistake to mistake but then 
learning along the way is is basically what the game is i think i think that's why mindset is so important i think mm. i think that's why a lot of people certainly in the previous chats that i've done with other entrepreneurs we've certainly touched on this a lot we've started with obviously we talk about uh what we're doing a lot but we always fall back on this we always fall back on perspective and mindset because ultimately the life of an entrepreneur as you've just literally summed it up so perfectly is exactly that it's not easy you're you're choosing to live a one percent life that nobody else wants <laughs> and some people a lot more now want it but they end up choosing not doing it because they realize that it's hard yeah you know, it, 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 it's it's amazing if, if you yeah. pursue it and it's amazing if you grind it out and you wake up and you do the next day and you wake up and you do the next day, but it's not easy. No. And I think people want it because they see the cool stuff. Like they yeah. see how, you know, you have exponential earnings that you could make or, you know, we see amazing stories of businesses that you have made people billionaires or you see that people, they you know don't have a boss and they can do their own thing mm. you see all the results but don't necessarily see the the grind and everything that goes into that so people want the shiny stuff maybe but then if you actually look at what that person's had to do to get there and the years it's taken and you know how that was never an overnight success I think that suddenly becomes less appealing maybe <laughs> to a lot of people who do you think like, is to blame for that um well I, I think a couple of things i think you know the media representation of entrepreneurs um yeah. i think i think even some entrepreneurs themselves like it, you know it's easier to sit and speak about all the successes and everything that's going really well than or, or maybe it's even you know you don't get asked that much about the bad stuff no or, it's why i try and ask it as much as i can because it's the, the stuff that I see, as you've just said, it's, 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 it's the bling, it's the watches, it's the cars, it's, it's, it's all I see, you know, and yeah. it's not yeah. what I experience. <laughs> yeah. And I, I think that's why podcasting is such a good medium and, and generally, you know, in interviews and things like that, that I give, I, I don't just want people to read it and think, oh, wow, that all looks so perfect. You know, there's mm. never been anything that's ever gone wrong in her life. Like, it's, it's great if people can see a more honest insight into things and obviously it doesn't fully prepare them if they themselves want to be an entrepreneur, entrepreneur because you always, you need to have lived it really to, to get that mindset and that resilience. But still, if you can read the experiences of someone else and it equips you even a little bit better for what to expect, then it's super valuable. I've just turned over <laughs> and that's the next page of questions. So, uh, feel free feel free to uh fire some at me but i am very much a, a researcher of my craft so that's 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 what i do so interviewing and researching and hosting things like this is such a skill within itself as well i love watching people do interviews like graham norton i love watching all his interviews it's, you've just mentioned that i think i used to and before we went all virtual and did all the you know corona stuff i stopped watching it now but i used to watch it as a kid every friday night with my parents because wow. i think you know, he was the best he was the best at interviewing celebrities and you know probably why i do some of the stuff i do now but um oh, yeah he's you know, awesome drifted off a little bit now you know so yeah. um i've got a question here which is kind of a two-part question um, because I've watched some of the, your stuff on LinkedIn and your other platforms. Um, and it's quite a journey, isn't it? From, you know, what actually made you execute on creating Untapped, you know, and then before then. So, you know, what, what was the, the actual clincher to, to, to take that leap or that step, if you want? Yeah. You know, I'd love to remember a specific moment where I thought, oh, I can't have a business. But I, I honestly don't think it it happened. I think it was a, well, it, when I was in my first job, there was a colleague there whose sister had a business and I was working in the social media role at the company. Um, 
And he said, you know, my sister's business needs some help with social. Could you help them out? And so met with her, um, you know, got got the project, even though it, it was so casual and I didn't yeah. see it as, you know, a client service provider relationship. I just saw it as, oh, I'm, I'm helping someone out outside of my nine to five. And then the next year I moved um, back up to London where I'm from and, and got a different role again in a university managing their social media. And alongside that, I met two different startups um, through, again, someone introducing me and they needed help with their social media. And, you know, again, it was super casual. I, I'm not even sure we had a proper contract in place for that one. And it was like £10. Pounds not, normally the way. It's normally the best way. Yeah. It was like not a project at all that you, you could survive on or pay rent on or anything. But I just found it really fun to do. Yeah. And I think... All, all of those things, those three sort of client projects I started working on without really realizing they were client projects, it meant that when I was a year into that job and it, was a, it wasn't a very flexible working environment, you know, you couldn't work from home, um, you know, you, you had to plan around the cycle of what was happening at work when you take annual leave and stuff like this. So I just started craving having fewer restrictions on, on yeah. how I managed. And so I thought, I wonder if I could do this part-time thing as a full-time thing. Um, and then I was really worried about handing my notice in because I felt like I, it felt a bit fake giving my notice in and not having another job to go to. I wasn't really sure how to explain that I didn't have another job lined up. I, I just yeah. wanted to work myself. And so what I ended up doing was I booked a trip to web summit in lisbon which is a tech conference mm -hmm. um and that was like seven weeks out from from that point in time and i didn't have the annual leave allowance to go so i knew i had to have at least given my notice you know four or five weeks before that so that kind of became a, a benchmark and then yeah sat my manager down i think he was quite surprised um and then you know my month's notice passed and then i woke up that first Monday of being, you know, self-employed. And I remember just sitting down. I still got up and got dressed for 9 a.m. and sat down at the kitchen table. And then I was like, ah, what do I do? <laughs> what, what, what does this even mean yeah. to be self-employed? And literally just learn on the job every day from there. Like from, I had no, no clue at all how things worked really. And um, just a lot of Googling, a lot of learning, a lot of failing and making mistakes. I think that's it though. I mean, you, your, your last, your last sentence there, literally Google. I mean, the, the amount of times that people direct message me and I spend on average probably talking to about a hundred people a day as part of what I do, you know, consulting others. Um, and it's, it's not too different from what you do. Um, and a lot of the time it's, how do I get this? how do I look for this? It's always asking for the end result without actually having to want to, you know, uh, do any work. <laughs> and there's this amazing thing called Google. It exists. It, it, it's pretty cool. And, you know, I, I don't, I don't go that hard on them straight away. You know, uh, you know, uh, I'm very nice no normally, um, but I'm just amazed after a couple of years of doing it, that people were still reluctant to, you know, in a, in a world, even now in 2020, where you can literally type in something on Google and go, how do I get equipment for a podcast? How do I make a video on YouTube? How do I, it's there, anything. How do I start a business? There's a video, you know, it's, you could, you don't have to, I mean, if you're really, really stuck, you know, there's other people. But um, I think I'm still, sometimes I get amazed by some, some people's uh, lack of motivation, Is that, you know, maybe the right word to, to take that extra step like you did, you know, and just yeah. go, okay, I'm, I'm doing this because it's, it's a different thing, you know, it's a, to go back on the mindset, you know, I think they know it they're just again afraid to do it 
And I, I think you've hit the nail on the head there with the, the fear thing, which, which is that I think sometimes people, people ask questions that they, they kind of know the answer to sometimes. Yeah. But if they Googled or, you know, found a book on the topic or paid for an online course, you know, there's so many ways that you can get information in this time that we're living. But, but by asking questions, you convince yourself that you're not quite there yet or or you put yourself in this mindset of you know i'm x but when i reach y i'll be ready to do it and that's when i'll take the leap and that that time when it you know the perfect time to start it it doesn't exist because you'll never be at that stage where you have the answer to all the questions like even now four years in like i feel a bit more comfortable with what I'm doing from a, a business point of view, I feel like I know more, but there's still every day, a hundred things probably that I'm like, oh, that's new. Or, you know, I wonder what we should do about this situation or how that works. Or that's the great thing about running a business is that you learn so much and you learn in such a short space of time compared to, you know, a, a more kind of corporate or nine to five environment, but you're never done learning. There's always, there's always so much more that, that you can, know about something that i don't think you ever reach this no. imagined state of, of being you know perfectly ready for it i agree you know i didn't go to uni um so you know do you think the university is still vital in today's generation no. when it depends what path you want to go down if you want to be a doctor then probably do yeah. consider university um if you want to run a business then I I think there's certain skills I learned at university that are applicable now, but not many. Um, what did you, you study know, at university? I studied English. So okay. research skills, writing skills. Yeah. Um, you know, probably the skill to turn up to a seminar on a book that you haven't <laughs> read and talk eloquently about it is, is maybe helpful now. Obviously, I'm put on my feet a lot in different um meetings that I'm in and, and you know it's, it's yeah skill to always kind of be able to think of an answer I guess but you know I, I think um a university can be a bit overrated um and I think given the cost now as well I was the last year to get in at, at the three grand fee okay. and now obviously it's nine grand a year which is a lot of money to pay massive if, amount yeah it's not directly leading to money that you're going to make back in a job later well i think also i mean the reason why i asked that with people that not only i work with but also i started to interview um regardless of their age whether they did it 20 years ago or just a couple of years ago because mm -hmm. i think the questions and answers that i've started to fall back on is um, as I've done this entrepreneurship path and, uh, you know, the Q and A's and, and started to talk to more and more people who have in the line of work, you know, I've started to realize that not a lot of people are living their own lives and some, some are, some aren't. And a lot of people are influenced by others, opinions, uh, others thoughts, you know, and, University is just one aspect, you know, how many people go to university because their parents told them to, or, you know, it's a, it's, 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 it's a choice that they wanted to, and they didn't really know it. If I thought back to the GCSEs that I chose when I was at school, I didn't even want to do them. <laughs> <laughs> they're not, yeah. they're not, they don't reflect what I'm doing now as a 27 year old. Yeah. And I think that's a massive sign of what's going on right now in the create, you know, creative environment of the generation. Yeah. And also, you know, jobs and the industries you can work in change so much these days that when I was 16 and deciding GCSEs, you didn't really work in social media. Mm. It was out there, you know, you'd message your friends on Facebook in the evening after school, but it wasn't really a thing that brands used massively to talk to people. And then when I was 18 and deciding where to go to uni, again, you know, I, I didn't really know that I wanted to run a business. What, you know, when yeah. I was 23 and started the business, I wasn't 100% sure if I wanted to 
run a business. So it, it's funny we make all these decisions when we're younger that, that do impact your life a fair bit, but you don't hugely know yourself yet or, or what you want to do with your life. I don't think when you're, when you're deciding, you know, we don't. You... <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Who does? And I, I, I think that's that you've hit the nail on the head perfectly. I think not only two things about, uh, you know, workplaces and social media, that's a massive thing. I think, um, you know, I, th- I, th- I still think it's new. And I, and I say new, you know, subjectively, because uh, the Super Bowl is, 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 is a huge thing. You know, look how many people watch that every year. You know, look how many people watch the adverts. Look how many people watch the, the main show. Um, and if you are in America, that's like the place to be, you know, as, 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 a, as an advertising place. Um, and nobody touches it. You know, nobody hits it up. Because it's you know it's 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 just a, it's a sporting event, and I think that concept is is widely overlooked. And mm-hmm. social media is looked as they're the bad guys, when really, in terms of advertising and marketing, it's not complicated. You know, it, it, Facebook advertising, Instagram ads, it, they're, they're all there. It's just um, you just gotta. You just got to read. You just got to look. You just got to know. If you yeah. put in the work, yes, you might try. You might fail. But as somebody who was a PT and worked in a gym for you know several years, there's no different if you want to do push-ups. Yeah. And I used to say that to my client all the time. You know, you want to get fit? Okay, cool. Well, we've got to eat healthy and we've got to get on a treadmill. <laughs> yeah, there's no secret. Yeah, and you know, you know, one of my pet peeves actually is when I get um print adverts or mail outs through the door and like I had one recently that was for a gluten-free pizza place and (laughs) the amount of and I I do eat gluten-free so I was like okay well that was one door that it was worth putting this through but if you think of the money they've spent on printing those then they've had to pay someone to hand them out door to door. I don't know what radius they'd gone for, but the pizza place wasn't particularly near where I lived. And I just yeah. thought, you could have spent the same amount of money on a Facebook ad campaign. You could have targeted people who were interested in pizza and who yeah. eat gluten free. You could have targeted people at a certain income level, you know, in a certain mile radius from your restaurant. You know, just you could have been so much more precise about But this you know company. why they did that? Why? Because people are stubborn. People, people yeah, are, you know, it's like, it's like everything that we've talked about in this conversation, I will try and have the same conversation with my father, but he, he won't understand it mm-hmm. because it's a different generation. I try and explain to my father what I am doing for a living and he doesn't get it. He thinks, he thinks I'm a bum, you know, um, he does. And it's, it's, it's the same. Some people who run businesses are stubborn. They're stuck in their ways. And it's the same when I was working in sales in you know, cold calling, lead generation, they're very stubborn. They still use KPIs, sales sheets, you know, calling them up when really, if you want to look at someone, if you want to find out the next big thing, you, you know, Instagram, you know, LinkedIn, you know, whatever, you know, when who's looking at CVs anymore? get on LinkedIn, you know, that's the next big thing. Who, as you just said, who hands out leaflets, Facebook ads, yeah, it's, but people are stubborn. <laughs> people are stuck in their ways. And um, you could say that about life. <laughs> it's, yeah, uh, skepticism as well, but people that, you know, they can hold the leaflets and they can hand out the leaflets and, even though there's so much data that you can get from Facebook ads to know mm. that it's working, but I think some people still, they don't really, they don't feel like they know or trust it enough. Um, or I hear a lot of business owners say they don't personally like Facebook because of, you know, data privacy and everything like this. So they don't want their business to be on Facebook. And yeah, that's, you know, always a bit of a red flag if you're kind of personal preferences as a founder are 
damaging what the business's marketing could be. So I, th I think that's well. Um, it's interesting you say that. Um, you know, I think I always answer this because I've had, I've, had, I've been asked this a few times by people. Um, and I've said, you know, what about Facebook ads? And again, like you've just said, some people have gone, oh, no, no, no. I don't I want to stay away from that. You know, it's because with the political stuff that's going on right now, mm. that, as you've just said, social media is, in some people's eyes, the enemy. Um, whereas I've always maintained the concept of, well, social media is just a platform. So ultimately, you should be in control of what you put on there. <laughs> oh. the secret to success by the way for people who are wondering to but maintain you know, a life of entrepreneurship is caffeine <laughs> you know i've never drunk coffee in my life how are you running a business if, without coffee I, I drink a lot of water that so do be i <laughs> my controversial secret is um no, that's not I, controversial I, I, <laughs> I know. no one really talks about it much but you know water is really good for you water is amazing i just yeah. i think since i left the structure of working in a gym and having to go to and from work i don't think i would survive without having coffee or some kind of like energy in me because i don't know how i would do it how, how much do you sleep per night? Do you feel like you don't get enough sleep? I don't. I don't really. I think... And I, I don't think that's a problem because uh, I talked a little bit about this with um, my last podcast, you know. I think I like the process. I like the... I think of it like a game. It's not a game, really. But um, So, you know, somebody can message me on Instagram and it could be... It, 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 it's not a sale. It's not, you know, transaction. It can just be a chat, you know, and that can be me doing my job. Mm. That can be me doing my job as whether it's a coach or whether it's nutritional advice, or whether it's business advice, whatever. And it can be at three o'clock in the morning, but that's me doing my job because I'm always in it. I'm all, I don't, I don't stop. And then I can be, at three in the morning no it can be someone coming to me it can be you know it could be advice it could be about a podcast it could be about a, a camera lens it could be it could be about general stuff it could be about anything my point mm -hmm. is it never switches off right okay. and and i like that i like the fact that it never switches off because i um to go back to the practitioner i am a practitioner i i like that i do it i'm in it and if I wasn't doing it, I don't know what I would do. I get very bored very easily. And, you know, this is why things like this are great because I get to not only see it from someone else's perspective, but I also get to do my thing. And then I get to put it on a platform where everyone else goes, oh, that's cool. So, um, yeah, constant. I don't sleep much, <laughs> but that's a different issue. <laughs> yeah, maybe that's why you need the caffeine. I, I need at least seven hours sleep, ideally eight or nine, and then I just drink. Rem remind me how it. you're running a business. <laughs> I know. Good time management. The last three here, you know, I think people are afraid to fail, which we've touched on. And I think people are chasing the quick money too much. And I think the ability to be humble and have that humility is something that I've learned not only myself, but I don't think a lot of people are there yet with self-employment and businesses. I think people like, I don't want to blame Netflix. I don't want to blame the reality TV shows. I don't want to blame all of that, but I think it is to blame a little bit because I see an awful lot of people that, you know, they, they front, you know, they put on a facade, they put on something that they're not. And I've been to uh, business seminars. I've been to, uh, you know, business events. I've been to, uh, you know, talk shows. I've been to everything else where I've seen the guys that they give it, they give it their all. They talk a lot, 
But in reality, they're just somebody posing behind something else. And if you have the perspective to see that, you might have a fancier jacket than me. But does that mean that, you know, after today we can go back and you can do something different? I mean, it's, it's about perspective. And I think there's a, a massive gap in the empathy and humility in people that aren't willing to go, but he's skinnier than me. I'm afraid. And that's costing so many people to just go, I'm passionate about it. Okay, so go and do it. You know, there's so many different things that make an individual happy and maybe fancy jackets and living that kind of lifestyle makes some people happy. But if it's not, if it's not congruent with how you feel inside and you know what you value in life then you're just being really fake and not only is that portraying a fake image to other people but it's just being fake to yourself as well and I don't think that's a particularly nice way to live so yeah I know what you mean about some people in the business world like fronting and posting watches and cars and things like this and you know whatever makes you happy and and whatever you want to attach your success to whether that's materialistic or otherwise fine but I think you know people posting online have a responsibility to to be real at least and not Mm. um not deceive people and, and lead them to think they're something that they're not because if you're a brand and I think I think people sometimes forget what a brand is and why brand strategies fail and why you know, plans and content strategies fail because the main concept of it is at the end of the day, if you're posting on a brand that, or even a personal brand, that ultimately reflects what is you. So whatever you post, whatever comes out, you know, on your page, your posts, your videos, whatever that is, that reflects the brand, that reflects you. And if it's a personal brand, if it's an individual you know, so whatever Will Smith does on his YouTube, that reflects him. He's just gone through a major controversial thing because he's, his affair has come out. So now everyone's looking at him differently. You yeah. know, nothing is, you know, nothing is not up for discussion in the world of online. You know, are they still going to think, oh, he's a cool guy, he does loads of videos? No, they're going to think he's a guy who messes around because it's all about perspective. You know, so I don't think that. I think he's a cool guy, but that's how yeah. the world works. Yeah. And yeah, and it, I think with something like that, it depends how much you want to share online. Like obviously, with that specific yeah. example, they sat down and I wouldn't know, have done that. <laughs> no, me neither. <laughs> each each to their own. But but you know, Jade has built this amazing platform with Red Table Talk, which yeah. you know I, I also love. I'm not saying what she did was was right but that that is an amazing show and the way that she's got the three generations and her mum and her daughter it's just such a nice concept and they chose to have that discussion and yeah. knew that, that would be broadcast and it's um it's interesting because it, it is putting something very private in a very public sphere but then the alternative is that the media would put their own spin on it and they wouldn't get to control their voice yeah. in the conversation so I, I think that was a benefit of putting it on social media in that case to wrap up, um, because we've touched on a lot um, and, you know, some talking points for, for people who are watching this, um, what's next for, because it's been, what, four years now? Yeah, four years this October, yeah. So moving forward, what's next for not only yourself, but also um, Untapped as a business? So I want us to continue growing and continue growing the team and growing the number of client projects that we're working on with um you know not just any old brands but brands that we really love their purpose and it's a really good fit and relationship and you know we can bring um good things to to them and, and what they're doing um i'd love to have multiple office locations that was always a vision 
pre-COVID, so I don't know what the, the office as an entity looks like too much now anyway. But I hear you. I, I, hear you. <laughs> I know. I, I really love travel, though, and I think traveling between lots of different office locations would be really fun. Um, and then, you know, personally, I, I just want to continue being really happy with the business and as kind of balanced as I can be you know I think the first few years of a business you're, you're always um working crazy hours and, and yeah. feeling super stressed and and stressful stuff does still happen now but I think this year for me has been more around you know throw whatever stressful stuff you want my way and I'll you know I'll find some kind of way of handling it like that's the kind of resilience and mentality that, that I want to build up and, and maintain in the next few years and beyond. Touching on that, you, you mentioned resilience, you've mentioned mentality. I love, I think that's, I think that's amazing. Uh, for, for anyone out there um, who's, who's looking to uh, potentially uh, venture out into the self-employed role, uh, maybe look into starting a business, uh, what would you give us, uh, you know, best best advice for for looking into it or, or or getting started? I think dedicate some time, you know, even a day, if you're thinking about it, to to sit down and map out properly what it is that you want to do, and don't don't think that you know starting a business means starting an instagram account and starting to, to post pretty photos but but work out like the real stuff like you know what's the business vision and who's your your core target audience and what are your revenue goals going to be how are you going to monetize um you know if you if you're producing a product what's that production look like what are your monthly expenses going to be do you need a team is it just you is this a lifestyle business? Is this, you know, a business that you want to be running for the rest of your life? Is this a business that you want to grow really quickly in a few years and then exit and sell to Microsoft? Or, like map it out in, in detail um, and, and see if it's viable, you know, run numbers, think about um, if that's the direction you, you want to go in with, with life because starting a business is, you know, it's quite a big, thing to do it's it takes up a lot of time as you'll know um and you dedicate a lot of energy to it as well it, it's kind of like a a kid <laughs> in a sense i say having never had kids but it's like you just put so much into something and then you you watch it grow and develop um so yeah just i i think be a mixture of realistic but then also i think some naivety helps when you're starting a business because i think if people knew the extent of work and stress that goes into it, I mm. think not many people would would start. But you just need to believe in yourself, be be resilient, and um, have a very clear idea of where you want to go. But then be flexible about how you're going to get there as as things chop and change and different obstacles or opportunities come up. Awesome! Don't be surprised if I don't clip that and put it on Instagram. <laughs> I'm looking forward to watching the clip because <laughs> that that was amazing. That was um yeah, that was everything that I probably hoped for in 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 your answer there. Because um I I definitely think somebody's going to watch that and go right. I'm going to go and do something now. Oh, uh, I hope so. So yeah, thank you for that. I feel thank like you. I feel like I've just sat back and just entirely focused on you, but that's uh, that's the point. So that's the frame, uh, North. <laughs> well maybe yeah maybe i'm graham norton <laughs> but um but no hopefully i can edit the pieces together and i'll do that um straight away and i'll hopefully get it up by tonight it amazing. will go straight it will go straight on my linkedin and then obviously i'll share it all on various other platforms awesome cool okay. well thank you so much for having me it was really good chatting no worries enjoy the rest of your day Okay, you too. Keep Bye. in touch. Bye. Bye.